Do you ever wish you could witness the greatness and power of God in action today, beyond what is written in the Bible? At Pilgrim Way Lives, we collect and bring you testimonies from Christians around the world of what God is doing in their lives to show you that our Lord Jesus Christ is very much alive today. Your testimony might be the only one that will resonate with someone somewhere around the globe, so come and testify. We collect testimonies in all formats, whether it's video, audio, or written. No testimony is too small. Let God use your testimony for good. You can testify in person or online by sending us your testimony at pilgrimwaylives.com slash testify. Join us in this conquest in gathering and sharing testimonies by supporting us financially at pilgrimwaylives.com slash donate. Thank you for supporting and participating in Pilgrim Way Lives. For more information about our ministry, visit pilgrimwaylives.com and contact at pilgrimwaylives.com. This is one of my favorite things that I get to be a part of in the church is this, is hearing people talk That's about funny. how God showed up, right? It's awesome. How he moves. And so for each person, man, I find myself being built up in that way. So how it usually works is that I will open up with an introduction. Okay. And then you introduce yourself and then you just have your way. Okay. Because the whole thing, the whole goal is to um, want to tell what God has done in your life, of course. But also because sometimes as Christians, we only hear about what God does like 10,000 years ago, about Abraham was and all these things. Oh, yeah. And people sometimes need to hear what is happening today. Hmm. And knowing that no matter what they've done, I mean, God, God is still God. He's still mighty and he hasn't stopped being mighty. Hmm. So that's the whole goal. Um, we're going to get, and get started and open a word of prayer and then open the session and then you close with a word of prayer. Awesome. Good? Yeah, I love All it. All righty. Well, let's bow our heads. Almighty oh, Father, you are our Father Omega. You are the beginning and you are the end. We are only your humble servants now, O Lord. Thank you, Traveler Drew, here to give his testimony and may it be used for your glory. Help the other believers who might be going through tough times and also help the unbelievers that might be intrigued about this thing called Christianity. But because they might not know that their God, I will say, really is alive, that Christ that raised from the dead is still alive today. Mm -hmm. And we can only do that by telling about the stories that he's been doing in our life daily. Have your way, Lord. Guide the words that come out of our mouth. And above all else, let that will be done and that our will be done. Mm -hmm. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Welcome, guys, for another episode of Program of Life. And as always, uh, it's an honor to have a guest here, Drew. He will be sharing his testimony. And again, we hope this will be a blessing to you. God bless and shalom. So, Drew, have your way. All right, awesome. Well, thanks, Chris, for having me come on and be able to share my testimony. Um, to summarize a lot of the beginning of my story, I think it would be uh, being given a lot. I had both parents, a mom and a dad who loved the Lord Jesus, followed them or followed him uh, and demonstrated to me what it meant to follow Jesus. Both my mom, both my dad, servants in the church okay. uh, and having a, an authentic, genuine love for him. Okay. My dad was a church planner, so I got to see uh, so many cool things happen in others' life mm -hmm. uh, and got to have kind of a firsthand experience of what it means to, man, start a church, see how God moves in a church and see a thing start with couple people and turn into several hundred. Uh -huh. uh, truly God's hand in the midst of it all. Uh, however, that was my parents' thing and it wasn't my thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> I kind of grew up in the church uh, knowing a lot of the right words, yeah. having the Christianese language down, uh, being given, uh, man, time after time again with amazing people who demonstrated what it meant to follow God. Uh -huh. There's so many questions, so many things you had, and that was all right at my disposal. This is what it means to follow Christ, Drew. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't me. It wasn't you? No, it wasn't me. No, I, uh, <laughs> for majority of my life, uh, I was about having fun. At the end of the day, that's what I did. I committed my life to having fun. Oh, wow. What was the most enjoyable experience I could find? That's what I did. Okay. Uh, so moving into high school, I had a couple of different friend groups. One was my church friend group and one was my, uh, like my other friend group. And it was kind of wild to me to see how different I could be within each group. Uh -huh. uh, oh, I see. So like, like a, um, a um, chameleon. Yeah. yeah. You are who you are, according to where you are at. Yep. Yeah, so one way I would, I would say the right things and have the right words and, you know, tell people, uh -huh. you know, I knew what it meant to follow Jesus and I was doing that. And the other was my, man, 
do what I wanted, have fun. I mean, at an early age for me, it just, yeah, drinking girls and doing whatever I could to make sure people were having a good time, mm -hmm. oftentimes oblivious to what, you know, my parents' rules for me, what God had for me, uh, what I knew was right. Because I knew right and wrong. It's one just of decided to ignore it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, right and wrong was one thing for me. The thing that was more important was having fun, doing what I wanted to I do. I see. Uh, so that continued in my life for uh, throughout graduating high school and then going into college. Mm -hmm. And college was a whole other world where I could do more of what I wanted. There was less of being in my parents' household and more of, uh, I, nobody's watching over my back anymore, right? Uh -huh. so, That's uh, true. Accountability is very important. Yes, yeah. So with less of that, you know, what's funny is God had even used uh, athletic gifting I had to get me a pole vault scholarship at a small Christian school. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, I look back and I see, man, his sovereignty in placing things um, so that when he was ready to wake me up, uh -huh. it, it was easy for me to, again, have access and know what he wanted to do for my life. But I'm jumping ahead, uh, going throughout college. I had a pole vault scholarship. I didn't have to pay much for school. It was mm -hmm. a huge blessing that I was just kind of like, whatever. Because when you're given so much at first, you don't really think about all that God is doing and what he's placing in your path. Mm -hmm. For me, it was a given that my parents would love me regardless. Uh -huh. It was a given that I would always have a home to stay in. It was a given that, man, I'd have food on my table. It was a given all these things were just a given for me. Mm -hmm. It's like how entitlement is birthed, right? It's where <laughs> fun becomes the all-time pursuit of your life because all these other things oh. you've got in the bag. Yeah. So I see, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So for me, it was just, man, a huge part of my story is being given so much and not recognizing God's blessing in it. So continue on this path, having a lot of fun. That escalates to bigger parties. Um, uh, just pouring my heart into relationships with people, uh, which at the end of the day for me uh, wasn't enough. And so I've always been myself. I've always loved people. I always love hanging out with people. Uh, it's never changed for me. I'm an extrovert at heart, and I love, you know, a celebration, a party. That's what I look forward That's to. That's fun. Yeah, it's fun <laughs> for me, right? Uh, so, so with all that, um, kind of coming to the end of the party scene, I was driving back from another college campus, going back to my Christian campus where I could party harder from this different college campus. And my little red Nissan 240SX is like a, like a small little sports car, right? <laughs> and I remember driving in that car and being at the height of the party scene, at the height of, man, all that I wanted, like I was getting. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and having this moment where God spoke to me. And for me, I can't, communicate it any more powerfully than God using, man, a song that I was listening to at the time to speak to my heart mm -hmm. and really push through all of the things I was pursuing and reveal to me who he was and how that changes me. So the, the song was actually a Taylor Swift song. Super <laughs> embarrassing. I know. And the lyrics were something like, uh, uh, who you are is not what you've done. Mm -hmm. So who you are is not what you've done. Something to that nature. And I remember like hearing them in this over and over again in my mind, wondering like, why does that matter to me right now? Why does it matter that who I am is not what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Like, what is, what is, what does that mean? And I just started weeping, like crying. And for me, like, I did not like that. I had to pull over the car in this little, you know, cornfields to my right and left, had to pull over my car because I was just bawling, wondering, Lord, what, what are you telling me. I knew this wasn't from me. Mm -hmm. I knew I was far from him. I knew, of course, he had grace and love for me and he had a plan for me, but I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. So when he woke me up in that moment to hear him speak through Taylor Swift of all people to tell me, hey, Drew, who you are, this is, this is not you. This is not the life I have for you. This is not the plans I have for you. This is you pursuing you, you pursuing, pursuing your fun mm -hmm. and not my plan for your life. Mm -hmm. And I recognized that in the moment. And I tell you what, this is just a testimony to parents who have kids not walking in the faith. Just keep praying. Just keep praying. Because, man, God will use what you've given them through the scriptures to mold them. My parents were amazing models to me. They had worked so hard and given me, man, the scriptures. So that when the Holy Spirit, his time frame was right, he woke me up to that. Because in that car moment, I knew what I had to do. Mm -hmm. I had to pray. 
And I had to say, Lord, I'm done with this. I can no longer be on one side of this and the other. I can't be playing chameleon when it comes to you, Lord. I can't have my way and your way. Your way. There's, there, there's, you can't serve two masters. I know that scripture full well, right? <laughs> because my story was that. It was trying to give part of me to God and part of me to myself. Uh-huh. You're going to have to, to be holy but fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and really kind of misplacing what fun was, right? So, uh, yeah, it was a, just a, a really cool moment. And in, it's just embarrassing, too. It's a big part of, man, you just kind of got to learn to laugh with what the Lord gives you. Uh, and, and I remember being in that car moment and knowing I had to change. I had to say um, goodbye to some of the relationships that I was investing so much time with. Um, and I had to, yeah, stop living for myself. Um, I, and I think of the prodigal son story almost like this young man who had been given so much. Mm -hmm. He'd been given the word of God and uh -huh. he had an example of what it meant to follow God and be in his father's household and all this stuff. And he just goes and wastes it, right? Uh, and for me, that's, I identify with that story so much because that feels like what I've been given. I'd been given the riches of heaven uh, in, a, in a small portion uh -huh. in my earthly life, just growing up with the parents I had, the family I had, the church I had. It was beautiful. Uh, and then to kind of squander that just for my own gain, it just that story connects with me. <laughs> it hits hard. Uh, yeah, it does. But what hits even harder is even knowing the Father's embrace. Like, even though he had squandered, you know, all that good things he had, the father still raced out to meet him. And in my little red Nissan 240SX, that's exactly what God did for me. He met me right then and there. And he said, Lord, he said, Drew, it doesn't matter. You're here now. And I've got you. And I've got good things planned for you. And so for me, it was just surrender. And I know there are parts of my story where I had surrendered bits and pieces. Uh, I think the greatest way I can tell it is it was a defining moment in my life where I was able to give more to the Lord than I ever had. How? I wasn't just trusting Him with my eternal salvation. I was trusting Him with my life here on earth mm -hmm. because part of me knew, man, God starts a good work in you. And I knew that who I was, right? I was already God's child. I just wasn't living like it. Mm -hmm. I don't think there was ever a time when the father, you know, said, you're not my son. It was just, you're not with me. Mm -hmm. prodigal story and I know we can get in the depths of that but for me man that moment and that time God used a Taylor Swift song this Taylor Swift song anything. anything right I know right um, to wake me up uh, and to yeah show me at the end of the day that who I am like is found in him mm -hmm. what my purpose is is found in him and every other thing that I commit my life to is mm -hmm. going to be uh, what Solomon writes. It's going to be vanity. It's going to be worthlessness. Yeah. But if I give myself to him, if I can trust him with not just my eternal salvation, but my life here on this earth, he's going to give me what he has to give me. Exactly. Uh, a joy that is different than what I pursue, perceive to be as fun. Mm -hmm. Or... Uh, a relationship with him that's going to complete me not a relationship with somebody else mm -hmm. or you know a girlfriend or whatever but a relationship with him mm -hmm. and how that satisfies and how that allows me to be man a servant of people and love people uh, but if I don't first and foremost have that with him if I'm not seeking his will and uh, submitting myself to what he has for me mm -hmm. It's going to be worthless. I'm going to find myself in, you know, cornfields on the side of a highway <laughs> crying, crying because <laughs> my life is, is empty. It's, yeah. And it's truly what it was. It was an emptiness. It was... And you're trying to find a, fill a void. Yeah, fill yeah. a void, exactly. But in all the wrong things. Yep. Yeah. It's kind of funny how sometimes we human beings, we think we are so smart because the person that created life, Give us a blueprint on how to live life. Mm -hmm. But we think we are so smart, we can figure out a shortcut. Yeah. Or we can figure out a better way than the one that created the whole life to begin with. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that, yeah, so that's, yeah, really what, I don't know. That was a huge moment, and that's a moment that I want to keep sharing with people because it brings me back to that too. Because mm -hmm. there's still times where I want to get caught up in what I want, right? Just yeah. because I've been saved doesn't mean I'm there. Yeah, it's, right. it's a work in progress. Oh, yeah, totally. So, 
Uh, yeah. It's honestly a joy for me to be here and even share that because it takes me back to that moment and like, hey, Drew, like, wake up. <laughs> Your God, who you were made for, has way better things in store for you than what you want. Exactly. When you prayed for us, your will be done, not ours. You say amen. Amen. Because your will done, God, is life. <laughs> it's joy. It's fullness. It's, man, a happiness that doesn't come and go with drinks or girls or drugs or whatever, but it's it's constant steady. yeah it's and it's full of peace and there's righteousness in it too which is a big word but basically just means it's right yeah yeah that is true um now you talk about um trusting god with your life here on earth um what do you mean by that because i want some people to understand that because sometimes people know they're christians mm -hmm. but sometimes when difficult time hits that's that's when you like that's when you you decide if you're Christian or not. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know you've you've been in those in those parts uh, where you ended up like, you know what? At this point, you will trust God in this situation because there's there's no way in, there's no way out, there's no way up or down. Yeah, you're just gonna brace the storm. Yeah. So what do you mean by trusting God with your life here on earth, especially for people that might be going through hard times right now or will be in the future? Yeah. Well, I think of uh, I think it was. Three years ago, uh, it was one of those times where God had called me to say, you can either trust me with this mm -hmm. or you can be full of anxiety. Mm -hmm. So uh, Taylor and I, my wife Taylor, we've been married for half a decade now. Uh, we were trying to have our first child uh, in the midst of, uh, you know, trying to figure out time frames because she was hoping to get in PA school and I had a job serving for the church and there's a whole kind of financial side to having a baby, right? Yeah. And insurance and all that. So in the middle of this, uh, we're just trying to figure out, hey, how do we plan for this, right? Because we come from the backgrounds we do. You plan for stuff like that. That's yeah. what you do, you know? <laughs> uh, and so we were trying to plan for that. And in the midst of all that, as we're trying, um, I had lost the job that I had mm -hmm. that was... Uh, allowing us to stay in the house we had. We had just made this huge first-time commitment of becoming homeowners, which for us wasn't something we took lightly. We knew the responsibility for that, the financial kind of commitment burden. you make, burden, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we just got a house. Uh, our car had just broken down maybe like four months after we found out we were purchasing this house, so we had this other financial thing coming up. Uh, and then in the midst of, you know, trying for this kid, uh, the... Uh, job that I'd been working came to me and said, hey, we can no longer keep you on. We'll have to take away your benefits. We can keep you on half time, if any time. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, in the midst of that, it was within three days, we had this new commitment of our house, a newer commitment of our car. Uh, I woke up one morning and the house, uh, a, a pipe or something had broken. Mm -hmm. So a third of our house was flooded. Uh, and then, you know, within the next day, they, the uh, people I was working for said, hey, we can't keep you on full-time anymore. We're having to pull your benefits. Here's part-time work. Mm -hmm. And then the next day after that, it was Taylor comes out and we just, the house is messed up. We have all our stuff in one room that wasn't flooded. Um, Taylor comes out with a pregnancy test, <laughs> drops it on the table and just starts bawling because our house is flooded. Like it's chaos. <laughs> We have these huge financial burdens. I just lost the, our main source of income. And then we've got a child that's now, Come you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, for, yeah. for us, what well, should have been, you know, this time of joy and just being like overwhelmed. Like we're having a kid. We're like, we're having a kid now? Uh, and and I, I think back at that time and I was just kind of washed by two things. Uh, like, Drew, you can either trust God right now He's got you, or you can give in to anxiety and trying to make your own path and trying to make things happen. So, do you trust me with this? And for me, it was hard because our my my initial reaction is to be like, "No, God, I don't trust you. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna figure this out my own way. Uh -huh. I'm gonna work really hard, and make this thing happen." But then acknowledging what what was like, I'm not in control. This kid is coming in God's perfect timing. Uh -huh. My job is to serve and follow him, to glorify him. Uh, this house that I have is a gift. You can take it or leave it, God. The car that I, you know we have is a gift. Take it or leave it, God. 
but do you trust me, Drew? It's like this huge thought. And so, like Job. Uh, well, not quite. What? Thank the Lord. But in a <laughs> like, small, small way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, uh, big moment. And, and it was hard, right? Because you work through, man, not just weeks, but months of trying to navigate. How do we do this? Mm -hmm. uh, but So what happened? Yeah. God showed up. <laughs> <laughs> True. I had a friend from uh, church reach out to me and say, hey, uh, we have this pizza business. Uh, we could, you know, take you on if you're interested. Uh, if you work full time, we'd be able to offer you benefits. And the benefit pack should, package actually ended up being better than the original one we had by Ooh. the grace of God. Yeah. Um, and I still was able to, man, uh, just commit myself to the work I had. Um there were still beautiful things happening in the church I was able to see and do. And God just reminded me time and time again, even through that, like what little faith I had, how big he is. Yeah, he can, so, he can use that itty bitty faith. A itty little bit, faith. right? Because <laughs> I know me, man. I'm, I'm, I'm hard pressed to just, to just surrender. Uh -huh. Like I, I still want to do things my way. <laughs> uh, but God calls us into, man, a faith in him that is beyond just the ease of life mm -hmm. uh, and cause us to trust him in hard circumstances too. And so, yeah, he showed up. I, I had a job. It wasn't easy, but it was good. Um, worked hard, long hours, but made a way. By the time that baby came in, he was a beautiful boy. Uh, and his name is James. Uh, a couple of reasons. It's a family name for Taylor, both and I. But James is, man, the book of James is what it is. Yeah. It is hard, blunt truth, right? Bold. You, yeah, it's bold, right? And so for me at that time, it was a bold time in my faith where I had mm -hmm. to dig in and be hard-pressed to find truth and not kind of uh, go back to the way that I want to live, which mm -hmm. is not trusting him. Yeah. So, yeah, it ended up being good. Uh, we had uh, an insurance thing come out kind of out of nowhere. We didn't even recognize that we had that helped pay for the new floors for our home, Ooh. which me and my buddy were able to do the work ourselves and, and it covered the cost like within the dollar, right? So God well, provides and shows up, but it yeah. wasn't easy. definitely required work, but uh, <laughs> he was so good uh, and he is good. And he's continued to yeah, have me share that story a couple of times uh, to bring me back to that. And no, man, he provides. He's got your back. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. sustains, yep. <laughs> He's got my back. So. That is true. That is true. Yeah, I mean, um, that's sometimes that's something about testifying also is that sometimes we get too busy with life and then we forget what God has done in the past. Hmm. Forgetting that and then we start doubting because we'll for, we forget that his track record so far is 100%. Yeah. He, he hasn't had a 99.99% success rate. Like 2.1% has missed. No, it's 100% clear cut. Amen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's not, he's not going to start now because the moment he does one time, then he's not God no more. Yep. Uh, he's not going to give that title to anybody else. Yeah. He's, like, he's really proud of that title. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, yeah. yeah, it's his name. Yeah. And he's, he's good on his word. He's got his name. He's faithful when, man, I'm not faithful. He is. He is. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Well, thank you for sharing. Oh, my goodness. Thanks for having me. I love This is awesome. I'm so happy for this, even this opportunity. It builds my faith up to be like, oh, yeah, remember what God brought me through? Yeah, Drew, remember that. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Anything else you want to add or testify again? I mean, we don't have to do it now. We're going to do it later, but the camera rolling. And I, I don't have a time for testimony pretty yeah. much because I'm like, if God has it on your heart, I'm no one to stand in the way. Yeah, awesome. Well, I think I'll share this. Whoever is listening, watching, uh, don't just take up God on a little bit of his truth. What he says is true. You can trust it wholeheartedly. And if he's got you, you're good. That's what it comes down to. I know sometimes we just get caught up in following God a little bit. Like, yeah. be like I'll, right. I'll take him in this way. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't want that. He wants all of us. Yeah. And the most joy I found, the most peace I found, the most endurance I found in hard times uh, has been in following him. Amen. So let me testify to that. God is good when we are not, when you are not, when I'm not. He's good. He's got amazing, beautiful things in store. You can trust him with every single detail of your life. Amen. 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 Well, I'm, we're going to end up in prayer. And I open prayer. 
You go ahead and close. I'm gonna close. All right. It's your testimony after all. <laughs> all right. Cool. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. Um, Father, I thank you that, Lord, you are so full of mercy and grace. Lord, how you can take a young man from the Midwest, a young man, Lord, from all over the country, a young woman, young children, Lord, anybody, uh, and you can do what only you can do. You can take us from, Lord, vanity and things that are worthless to who you are. Lord, that you don't leave us on this earth wondering who you are, but you reveal your word to us. You reveal who you are through that word. God, that you give us each other um, to build each other up, that your church is purposed for that, to help each other grow. Pray, Lord, for anyone who's listening, that they would have the boldness and the bravery um, to follow you wholeheartedly, uh, not missing out on anything you have, but trusting you because you are God the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is life. Uh, it's in your name we pray, Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chris. That was Drew's testimony. Again, till next time. Shalom. Shalom. Amen. <laughs>